Hello and welcome back to EVE Online. Today I wanted to make a video talking about abyssal filaments. Mainly I wanted to make a video directed towards new players to teach them how they can get into this type of content, teach them what it will give them in return, and show off some beginner fits that you can run with your friends. So first off, abyssal filaments have to do with the invasion that's going on. In the invasion that's happening, the Triglavians are attacking our space. This started a year or so prior with the abyssal filaments when the Capsuleers, us, went into their space, started fucking them up, and stealing their shit. From doing these abyssal filaments, you get all kinds of loots from caches that you blow up and loot like any normal wreck. In tier 1 filaments, assuming you're running frigates, anywhere between 60 to 100 mil can be made an hour by alpha players, with very few restrictions. This assumes that you're looting every single cache that spawns, and that you get about 4 of them done in an hour. Now there's two ways to do these filaments, number one, by yourself in a cruiser, or number two, in a frigate with up to two other friends, a total of three people. Obviously you'd have an easier time with cruisers, especially if you were playing by yourself, however, the skills you need to get into cruisers that can do relatively well in this are a lot higher and the price for the cruisers are a lot higher as well. Three friends in frigates and all you need are a couple frigates that are worth anywhere between like 1 to 15 mil as you see here. You can even solo the frigate ones by yourself and you'll actually get all the loot for yourself and it will be three times the amount you'd get of the equivalent tier in a cruiser. So before getting into any of the fun details about how these things work and how you do them, let's go over the fits that you and your friends can use. This guide's gonna focus on if you're running this with two other friends. So right here is a fit that was actually sent to me by someone that watches the videos. And it's proven very, very reliable and very versatile. This ship can do any type of filament. I'll get more into that in a bit. For short for now, there's about five different types of filaments and they all have different effects. Different ships are better for them, but this ship, this is very versatile and I'd say very reliable in every single type. So running three of these in a group wouldn't be such a bad thing. This variant of it is outfitted for pretty much day one players. In the high slots we're running Arbalist Compact Light Missile Launchers, four of them. Ammo is Kaldari Navy Scourge Light Missiles for that extra range and damage, you can run regular Scourge missiles. Or whatever type of missile matches the damage penalty unique to whatever type of filament you're doing. In the mid slots, we have a 1MN monopropellant enduring afterburner, a small shield extender 2 for a little bit of buffer, and a lot of people do not like mixing active shield boosters with shield extenders, but let me tell you, this has saved my life with this fit. You're gonna want this shield extender. Over here we have small ancillary shield boosters rather than regular ones. We're using Navy Cap Booster 25s on them. That lets you load nine into each one. If you're running both at once, that's 52 hit points a second for as long as your cap along with the cap boosters last. Realistically, you only actually need to run one of these at a time but you have that extra leeway should you need it. In our low slots, we have two Ballistic Control Systems 2 to pump up that uh, missile damage. I don't have the best missile skills, and with this, I get about 78.2 DPS. So this is probably what a newer player would get as well. And over here in the rigs, we have one small anti-EM screen reinforcer 2. That's to get that EM resistance up. Really helps, 0 to 35. Small anti-thermal screen reinforcer 2 gets that uh, thermal resistance from 20 to 48 and finally a small processor overclocking unit this is essentially because newer players probably wouldn't have the cpu to run this and if they did i actually have um more fits that they could run for example you replace that with more damage for your missiles or you move up into the tech twos where you actually probably still need the overclocking unit but as you see over here this has 3.5k effective hit points 52 up to 52 hit points a second active uh shield boosting very stable cap until you run out of navy cap boosters so i'd be careful and try to only use one set at a time because the reload times on these are pretty severe 
Running with me today in this video, one of my friends, Paradox, is going to be running this Tristan super cheap. Look at it, it's one fifth of the price of what I'm running. It's not optimal for what we're doing, but he's here running Navy, I believe mainly antimatter chargers, one ancillary shield booster. This made him a bit squishier, but and only a small shield extender one instead of two. He was a bit squishier, but this is a dirt cheap fit that you can try with your friends. Some processor overclocking units, magnetic field stabs, and some drone damage amps. Super cheap. It worked out for him. He didn't actually die once. He got close once, though. And my other friend, Sarah, is going to be running this Punisher, packing some dual modulated beam lasers, running, I believe, mainly the multi frequency Imperial Navy Edition. I believe this was up close and then using the gammas, I think, for long range. Yeah, gammas for longer range. Compact Afterburner, Cap Recharger 2, and I'll tell you why, because he's running two small armor repairer 2s. Cyrus Tank is actually an active armor fit. 44.1 hit point a second regen, not as much buffer. There are certain enemies that can sh basically one-shot this from shields like into structure, but I haven't seen them kill her yet. So long as you get some traversal orbiting your enemies, and you keep these burning, you're good. This fit is primarily actually made for electricals. You see the cap is super unstable. When you go into electricals, this is a 100% stable fit. You can actually run both armor repairers at the same time for pretty much the entire filament. Got some armor resistance in these adaptive nano membranes, and otherwise some heat sinks. A small capacitor control circuit, two auxiliary nano pump, and one small processor overclocking unit. These are the fits we're going to be running today. They're very good for starting new players. This, I'd say, still is the best because this can be utilized for any type of filament to pretty much peak efficiency. The other ones are more meant for other types. Like the Punisher I showed you is meant for electricals, and the Tristan, really it's not meant for anything, but it would do the best in exotics or firestorms. But all right, that's enough chatter here. Let's hop right into the filaments and I'll talk more about how everything inside them works and we'll go from there. So now we're gonna go over the filaments, how to run through them and everything that you should know, at least to start. The most important thing to know is that these filaments have a 20 minute timer from the moment the first person enters them. If this 20 minute timer runs out, you lose your ship, you lose your pod, any implants or cargo you are having, and you will spawn at a new clone in your home station. To open them, you're going to want to buy three of any type of filament on the market. Just look up, for example, Calm Exotic Filament, Calm Firestorm Filament, or other types like that. To run frigate filaments with your friends, you just go anywhere in space. I'd suggest making a safe. You get the three of you in a fleet. You right click the stack in your inventory. It only needs to be in one player's inventory. Hit activate on the filaments. And then you'll consume all three, one for each of you. And you'll be able to jump right into the filament. While running frigates, you will always consume three, even if you are soloing. However, this is still more profitable than running tier threes in a cruiser. So. Don't really worry about the cost, but make sure you acquire enough volume if you plan on binging these. To go over them in depth, there are five types of filaments, and you need to pick yours and your ship based on the type you're doing. The footage I'll be showing will be running electrical filaments. Electrical filaments give a penalty to EM resist to both you and the rats. That's how all the damage resist penalties work in filaments. They apply to you and the NPCs inside them. Electrical filaments also give that bonus to capacitor recharge time, which can make cap unstable fits suddenly stable once you're in these. There are dark filaments, which has a penalty to turret optimal and fall off ranges rather than a penalty to damage resists and a bonus to maximum velocity. Darks are widely considered the hardest and worst to do for almost every ship in the game. There's some people that love running them, but it's really not recommended, especially if you and your group are complete noobs. Exotic filaments have a penalty to kinetic damage resist and a bonus to scan resolution. Firestorms have a penalty to thermal resist and a bonus to armor hit points. 
Gamma has a penalty to explosive resist and a bonus to shield hit points. As a note, but this is not always true, the best faction ship to run for any type of filament would be for electrical, Amar, for exotic, Kaldari, for Firestorm, Galente, and for Gamma, Minmatar. But the pirate ships complicate things and really you can make any fit work at least for tier one for almost everything. Once you get into the filament, you're gonna wanna start moving immediately because you're now on a timer to death. You can find the timer once you're inside the filament at the top left, it'll be a big red timer with a 20 minute countdown. Now that you're here in the first pocket, you should know that there are three pockets total in every filament. The way you know you're not about to exit the filament completely is because the conduit in the room will say transfer instead of origin. When you see origin, that is your exit point. To go through any of these conduits, you first have to kill every single enemy in the room, so definitely make that your priority. Once the enemies are dead, the loot only comes from the caches in the room. Make sure those are on your overlay. To collect them, you just run up to them, blow them up, take what's inside, you're good to go. Most of the loot spawns in the bio cache, which always spawns right next to the conduit. In the extraction nodes and sub nodes around the room, you'll mainly find crafting materials for Triglavian blueprints, which you will also find plenty of if you keep looting those bios. A speedrun strategy is to just loot the bio and then move on to the next room, but you'll need a lot more filaments to run like that, and the loot you get out of the extractions, while not seeming to be a lot individually, they add up to being anywhere between a quarter to half your loot, even at tier one. And that 60 to 100 mil loot spawn that I referenced earlier, that is assuming that you're looting everything and doing four of these an hour. I don't have any numbers to if you're just rushing bio, unfortunately. The progression of the pockets in these are pretty routine. You go through a conduit, loot will randomly spawn in RNG nodes, enemies will RNG spawn off a predetermined list of opponents determined by the tier that you are running with varying difficulties, resists, and yada yada. I can get further into that in a more advanced tutorial if you guys want to see that. There are two more things that you should definitely know before getting out of here. Clouds and towers, and we're gonna start with clouds. So you may notice that there's random cloud-shaped particle effects in these filaments, and they all have a different color. They all have a different effect, and you need to be wary of some of them. If you are running an active shield tank, Orange clouds are one of your worst enemies. It will give a penalty to your shield booster boosting by about 40% and the duration of the booster will take another 40% just to run one cycle. So stay out of orange clouds if you're a shield booster. If you are an armor repairer, yellow clouds are your worst enemy. There is a penalty to armor repair that goes 80%. You definitely don't want to be stuck in one of these if you are armor repping. And finally, what I think is the worst cloud of all, the blue clouds. They increase your signature radius by 300%. That makes you four times easier to hit. One thing to note is all of these clouds affect the enemies just as they affect you, so they can be used strategically, but realistically, especially in tier ones, it's best to avoid these, especially those blue clouds. Now for towers, one of two types of towers can spawn in, and I'll show you what they look like on the screen. There's two types. The first is tracking pylons. These increase turret tracking to enemies and to you by a set amount, it's range depending. The other type is a automata suppressor. There's variants that have different ranges, but the effects are the same. It will spew out this particle rather than pulsing like the tracking pylons. And when you see that spewing out, that means it is now attacking either your drones, someone's missiles, or enemy rogue drone frigates that are attacking you. These can be very useful to use if you're fighting rogue drone frigates. 
These can be very harmful to you if you're relying on drones and or missiles. It will completely destroy them and render your playstyle ineffective, so be careful of these. The towers can be destroyed, but I haven't seen that it's really worth going out of your way to target them while you're on the 20 minute timer. When fighting your opponents, especially the bigger ones like the enemy battleships, just make sure that you're not flying straight at them when you're trying to get some orbit for traversal so that they can't shoot you as well. What you're going to want to do is approach them at an angle. That way you're not running straight into their fire because these battleships can probably two-shot you in some cases. In most cases, especially as a new player with beginner fits. Once you've gotten to the third pocket, it's now time to go out the origin conduit. You will have a one minute invulnerability timer in which you cannot drop another filament or enter another filament. But after that minute's up, you can drop another one and keep going right away or dock and deposit your loot first. These are all the basics you needed to know. I hope the fits that I showed you help out. This is all you need to start making 60 to 100 mil an hour with your friends or solo. I think another video I'll do soon is show you a frigate fit that can solo, that an alpha can use at a very early state, and I'll run you through soloings just so that you can see that it works and how it works. If you want to see any more EVE videos of any kind, let me know. I might do a more advanced tutorial going over enemy damage types and effects and things like that. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.